Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, so happy when, uh, actually it's probably gonna be Friday when this is, video is released, sorry about that. Um, so hope you guys have a good week. Uh, today we're gonna be discussing whether I think the technical aspects of a watch or the design elements of a watch are more important when it comes to uh, watch collecting, why people like watches, all those types of reasons. Um, this is a very controversial topic. I think there are some, you know, in-house movement uh, purists who only want you know the best horological value in the movements and, and, and the finishing and then there are other people who just want watches that look nice uh, it's a bonus that there are good movements it's a very controversial topic um, it's very divided but I think you know I'm gonna give you my two cents on what I think about each of these uh, camps and perhaps at the end shed some light on how I feel about it um, so uh, that's gonna be the topic for today if you haven't already and I say it every single video be sure to hit that like button it really does help us out um, so looking at this kind of topic, like I said, there's two kind of sides to it. There's the technical aspects. So whether a watch meets, uh, I guess, certain requirements uh, horologically. So, it, you know, looking at the movements and, and the way in which the movements have been uh, put together, etc. And then the design elements. So how a watch looks, how it feels on your wrist, um, how it all kind of comes together as one. So um, we'll start in the, you know, technical side. Uh, obviously, um, you know, when you look when you look historically, technically speaking, watches were um, the technical side of watches were the most important thing when it came to watchmaking. Um, accuracy was the number one thing that watchmakers were trying to grasp and try to attain. Um, it didn't really matter how they looked; if it was the most accurate timekeeping keep device possible, that was a feat in itself. Um, so, you know, then you know people started getting into the you know, quartz watches started to become, became the most uh, accurate uh, timekeeping devices. Then, you know, we now have iPhones that basically keep, uh, keep time. <laughs> you don't need a watch, it's a luxury at this point. So accuracy kind of went out the window, but there are still people uh, today where the technical aspects of a watch have manifested as one of the most important parts of them. So I think the way in this, this, this came about was in the term in-house movement. So in-house movements kind of describes the fact that a manufacturer creates a movement by themselves from scratch. And um, people have associated in-house movements with watches that um, are put together by hand, as well as perhaps are, there's a little bit more time taken in, time taken in putting those movements together and designing ones that can be as accurate as possible. This is in contrast to uh, watch uh, companies like ETA, um, where these um, companies create mass produced movements that are most of the time put together by machines and perhaps not regulated by a specific watchmaker um, to create at, at a specific accuracy level. And then those are sold to other companies who then put those into their watches. So um, people prefer those in-house movements. And a lot of the times, unfortunately, uh, the ETA watch watches are in um, you know luxury brands and, and marked up at, at pretty high prices when you can probably purchase watches with similar movements for a lot less. So people prefer those in-house movements a lot and it can kind of come across as being a little bit snobby, um, but at the same time, I think it's just a preference. People prefer to have watches that have that, um, you know, kind of, it's kind of romantic. A, a watchmaker created this movement and designed how it was put together and then put it together and then tested it, and et cetera, et cetera, as, as opposed to something that just came out of a factory and, you know, was shoved into a watch. Um, so a lot of the times that, that, is the, that is their kind of argument. They don't like the fact that, that things are um, mass produced. They want to know that it, that it was um, taken, there was a little bit more time taken. Um, this also kind of leads into um, certifications like chronon being chronometer certified where the watch movement is tested and meets specific um, requirements to, accuracy requirements to, to, to gain the certification. So that's one side. People say we will never buy mass produced movements. We will only buy watch uh, watches with in-house movements that have, uh, people have taken the time to make sure that they are accurate and um, beautifully finished and uh, put together by a, a single watchmaker. So that's one side of the camp. The other side is design. And and <laughs> I'm completely honest, this this is kind of funny because it's the first thing you really notice about a watch, right? So um, these people buy what they find visually appealing to themselves. So this obviously manifests itself in how the dial looks, how the dial is laid out, how things um, mesh with each other on the dial, but it also can be things like the movement finishing or perhaps the case quality and how it all is put together. Um, 
this is gonna be the first thing that you really notice about a watch. And I think this is where, um, why the people in the technical camp give people who are in the design camp a little bit of a hard time because um, I guess if you're on the technical camp, you've realized that something looks good, but then you've realized that it has a, has a really good movement, which is why you purchase it, as opposed to just looking at it, saying, I love what, how this looks, and then buying it and maybe an ETA. It's, it's a, a mass-produced movement. So I think they get, get a hard time because they, the technical camp thinks the design people have not really taken the time to study the watch and identify more information, more information about that watch than just how it looks and feels and, and, and um, contrasts it's on the dial and things like that. So I think that's where the, the whole divide comes. Um, but it, at the end of the day, the design of the watch is really gonna be the thing that you're gonna look at. Yes, I can look at the watch on my wrist and I can say, oh, this has an in-house movement, et cetera, et cetera. But really, if someone in, on the street ends up looking at my watch, they're gonna say, do I like the look of that? Yes or no, they're not gonna ask. The average individual is not going to ask me about the movement inside. So I see where the design people find the, the technical people a little bit snobby because, um, you know, a lot of the times those in-house movements are also a little bit more expensive. So there's a lot of, you know, ebbs and flows when it comes to these, these arguments. Um, I guess, you know, where I fall on this, I am truly a person who believes that you should buy what you love. Um, if a watch makes you happy, then I'm going to like it. It's one of the hardest questions to answer. If someone comes up to me and says, hey, do you like my watch? I'm almost like, I, I don't know, like you bought it. It's not really, you know, for me to say. It's on your wrist. You have to live with the watch for the lifetime of, the, of that watch. You should enjoy it. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't look for external val validation on the watch that you end up purchasing, right? So. I'm a true believer in buy what you love. I also believe though that watches that have a little bit more time and energy put into the technical aspects of them um, make me a little bit more happy because I am aware of you know, the time and energy and engineering feats that the watch on my wrist may have, uh, may have been involved in. You know? So for me, I think because I'm so interested in watches, I like the technical aspects of it, but I'm not gonna shun someone just because they purchase a watch that has a mass produced movement in it. Um, so I'm kind of right in the middle. I appreciate te the technical aspect. I really appreciate the design aspects. I really appreciate the, the technical aspects. Um, but it's not like I'm going to only only buy ETA movement watches, or I'm not uh, I'm not only going to buy in-house movement watches. A watch makes me happy, and and I enjoy wearing it on my wrist. And I would probably fall in that camp, right? So, um, I think a lot of people try and be one or the other, and I think you should just kind of fall in the middle. You know, there's there's a lot of pros and cons but for both of them. I think, you know, watch companies that put mass produced movements in, in their cases and perhaps, you know, finish them a little bit differently or adjust a few things here and there, but then mark them up um, substantially. I think that's kind of, and I think this is where the technical people are right. It's kind of like robbing people. You know, I could buy a watch with a lot less, uh, a, a lot um, uh, for a lot less, um, you know, less modifications by the manufacturer, but I, I get the same movement in another watch for a lot less. I think that's where technical people uh, kind of get a little bit upset. And um, I think that that whole practice, I think kind of revolves around the fact that a lot of these brands, luxury brands have a lot of power with, with the way in which their name is portrayed or, or thought of by consumers. And they can, I don't want to, make this as a Zeus, but they, they simply can do it, you know? Um, so there's definitely two, two divided camps when it comes to this topic. I say, be in the middle, buy what you love. If it ends up pleasing people, um, pleasing both sides of these arguments, that's great. But if it doesn't, who cares? Because the watch is gonna be on your wrist. It's not gonna be on their wrist. So enjoy it for what it is. And you bought it for a reason. So um, I hope this kind of gives you a little bit of information about how I feel about this topic. It's a very divisive topic. I'd love to hear in the comment section below what you think. Of the, uh, you know, are you falling in the technical camp? Are you in the design camp somewhere in the middle? What do you think the, the line is where you can kind of be in both? I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts on what you think about that. Um, it, 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 I think this is gonna be another controversial video that I've made, I, I hope. I think there's a lot of really interesting discussions that can happen in the comment section if, if people are kind of engaged in, 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 this, in this discussion. And perhaps it might shed some light on your opinion versus someone else's. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed this topic. Um, if you didn't see our video, our first video of the year was out on Wednesday. We discussed um, a pretty interesting topic. I, I really enjoyed actually making that video, um, kind of 
you know, we basically outlined how you identify if a watch is undervalued. Uh, we created a really cool graphic, so be sure to check that video out. Um, if you haven't liked this video, be sure to do it. Let's see if we can get to 20 likes. Also, hit that subscribe button. We create videos about watches. Um, Happy New Year if you didn't see that other video. And with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time.